This is Altura Now with Steve Iloff. The Older Persons Advocacy Network, or OPAN, has been providing services to older people across Australia for over 25 years. And now we speak with uh, CEO Craig Gear uh, to discuss how COVID-19 has impacted the community that OPAN serves. Thanks for joining us, Craig. Good to see you here. OPAN is active across metropolitan, regional, rural and remote areas of Australia. Could you firstly outline the services that you provide? So OPAN provides the National Aged Care Advocacy Program on behalf of the Commonwealth Government, but we're an independent organisation that provides uh, free, confidential uh, information, education and individual support to older people and their families. It's predominantly around, I suppose, dealing with aged care services to get the best out of their aged care. Uh, it might be about an uh, advocate walking alongside someone to actually help them raise their issues, um, standing behind them to help them have their voice, uh, or acting on their behalf to actually uh, engage with the aged care provider to resolve an issue or to uh, Im improve the aged care services. So, Craig, OPAN is made up of a lot of organisations across the country. Um, who's out there on the ground doing the work right now? There's about, we think, around about 60 aged care advocates across the country who are uh, at this stage phoning people or doing virtual meetings with Skype for, with older people and their families. Um, they, they're made up of from nine organisations. So there's one OPAN member in each state and territory and there's two in the Northern Territory. And so these organisations, as you said at the, in your introduction, have been doing this work for around 25, 30 years in some cases. So they've got lots and lots of experience of the aged care system, but also lots of experience about the local supports that are available for people and how services work in their local setting. And that's really important because we can't just have a top-down approach we also have to know how the community is responding to COVID-19 and how we can tap people into those local services. So our national 1800 number gets you through to your state and territory uh, service provider, uh, that your local OPAN member. And how has uh, the COVID-19 crisis affected the way that your organisations provide services? Yeah, it's been interesting COVID-19 because there was a number of our services that were used to providing telephone-based information and advocacy support. So for those or those who were doing that, uh, it wasn't so much of a, uh, a stretch to actually start working from home and continue to provide advocacy support. However, our education sessions were often uh, sort of really well subscribed and they would be in community centres or they would be uh, in residential aged care facilities. And so the ability to do that and get to people and let them know that aged care services, uh, aged care advocacy services are there for everyone uh, has been a bit curtailed. So we're looking at a different way of providing those services and some more um, outreach and outbound calls to be able to connect in with older people and their families. Craig, there's obviously a lot of fear surrounding COVID-19. What sort of information and advice are you providing to people receiving aged care? Yeah, we're hearing from a lot of people in, who are living in the community who might be receiving home care or people in residential aged care who are concerned about the safe delivery of their aged care services. And it's important that they get accurate information and also to know that those services can be provided in a way that uh, provides continuity of care, but does so in such a, in a safe uh, and effective manner. Um, so we're doing a series of webinars, we're putting information on our website, uh, we're using social media to get information out there, but also out to families as well. So each week we're doing a webinar to actually inform people about some of the issues around COVID-19, encouraging them not to cancel their services, but to look at different ways to provide those services during this uh, COVID-19 period. And it's, it's important, I, I suppose, that they understand their rights um, under the current restrictions around social distancing and isolation and all of that sort of thing. Absolutely. So we are champions of the Charter of Aged Care Rights. And just because there's these necessary restrictions on, uh, on people connecting with each other and being, uh, I suppose, in, in large places or group activities and those sorts of things, um, it doesn't mean that the Charter of Aged Care Rights has gone away. And it's really important that we actually balance 
the rights and protections and that those two things can work together and we um, make sure that people are still informed of their rights and that their rights are still respected. Um, it's a necessary time of restriction, but not a necessary time to remove people's human rights. And what are some of those rights that we need to keep foremost in our mind? One of the rights for me is the right to, um, I suppose, have my, um, my culture, um, my personal um, worth, or my um, diversity respected as well. One of the things I think there's an opportunity during this time is actually to get to know uh, older people better, to actually understand their lives and their, their specific, um, one specific needs, but specific life experiences as well. So respecting that and the diversity and indifference. Um, also respecting people's independence and right to make choices during this time as well. So the dignity of risk is still there. Um, and, and people being informed, having information in a way that they can understand. Those rights are really, really important. And it's a balancing act, isn't it? Absolutely a balancing act. So I think it's, it's actually looking at what is the health risk? What is the science behind this as well? So if you do standard precautions, um, effective hygiene, wash your hands, keep the social distancing, then care can still be provided uh, and people can still get the supports they need during this time. And Craig, what are some of the challenges being voiced by people receiving aged care at the moment? The biggest challenge we're hearing at the moment around aged care is the restriction on visitation. This has been a really hard thing for people to, I suppose, comprehend that they can't go and see their loved ones as much as they'd like to, um, particularly for those who might have been part of that care team and be part of that um, supports or feeding or um, just emotional support. And so we're calling on aged care providers to really think outside the square and think of different ways that those care and supports can be provided, whether it's through technology, whether it's through regular check-ins or text messages, but also to think about um, the, the impact of this isolation. So be checking in and supporting the older people the other thing we're asking for is, I suppose, a compassionate approach to um, some exceptional circumstances where it might be appropriate for someone to come, even in a preventative lockdown, to still be able to go and see the older person, particularly end of life or palliative care um, clients, and to work out ways of still connecting, even if that's short time with proper infection control uh, procedures in place. And of course, getting factual information uh, out to, 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 to people as well. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of work to try and make sure that people get the right information in the right time, in the, the way that they can understand. So we're looking at ways of um, amplifying the government's messages, clarifying those messages uh, for older people, but also simplifying the messages so people can actually understand what they need to do at this time. Uh, the other thing we're doing is working with um, aged care providers for where maybe someone wants to change their service or cut down their service or cancel their service. We're asking people to have a chat to us first and we've started a service today where the provider themselves with the consent of the older person or the family to actually uh, call us and have a chat with us before they decide to cancel that to see if there's another way that the services could be provided. And can you share any examples of good news stories that have come out of this situation so far? Um, there's two I can think of. So we had uh, uh, Val Fell, um, who's one of our community advocates, and um, Val's been part of our webinars. So she's, she's been advising us on the IT side as well and uh, innovative ways um, that people can, can, can connect. Um, but she talked about in her local community how people are going off the ground and uh, dropping off rolls of toilet paper just to make sure that someone's safe. Um, but using that as a way to connect and make sure that that person's um, okay at the moment and whether they need someone else to check in on them. And the other thing that's really pleased me is a, a Facebook group that's started up called the Kindness Pandemic, where people actually are uh, using that as a way to socially connect, but also to share their experiences of the good things that are happening during this time. Probably the third one is around some of the intergenerational care and support that's going on. So uh, younger people calling up uh, older Australians and having a conversation with them about 
tell me about a time when you're, this happened to you when your restri- uh, life was a little bit different. And I think we're learning a lot from um, older Australians during this time. Isn't it interesting what we can achieve and, and some of the, the, the amazing things that happen in the face of adversity like this? Yeah, and it, it, during these times, it, you, you sort of get really crystal clear on what's important. And I think for a lot of us now, we're realising how important relationships and connection are. And uh, uh, if that's one good thing that comes out of this and we um, have a bit more respect, um, a bit less ageism in uh, the community, uh, and, and I think that that will be a good thing and good lessons that we'll learn out of this. And Craig, one of OPAN's key strengths as an independent body is supporting aged care providers and consumers to know their rights and responsibilities. How can staff continue to uphold the rights of older people and support their well-being um, when there are so many restrictions in place? Yeah, so understanding the role of aged care advocacy is really important at this stage. Um, understanding the Charter of Aged Care Rights is really important as well. And there's some resources on our website, opan.com.au, um, for aged care workers. This is a really great time to do some professional development. And one of our professional development opportunities is our Talk To Us First um, videos, which actually step you through sort of some of the ways that uh, um, an advocate can assist an older people, person, but also can assist, I suppose, the provider in uh, resolving some of those issues. So there is a good opportunity to learn during this time as well. Um, We're gonna be pushing out our videos, um, particularly our Notice Something, which is about preventing the abuse of older people and understanding what some of the signs and symptoms are. So uh, that's about uh, respect to live free of neglect and abuse. And I think uh, the more we can understand the rights and we can actually understand the Charter of Rights, uh, the better we'll be through this as well. And providers are finding it tough too at the moment, aren't aren't they? Um, And uh, trying to support them through this time when they're working so hard. What would you say to those, uh, to to staff? Yeah, so um, for the staff that are working there, it it is a a thank you for the work that people are putting in. The fact that people are still turning up to work when they might have some concerns about their personal wellbeing and safety as well. Um, So there's a mutual respect and responsibility that has to happen there as well. Um, At this time, that those frontline staff are really, really important and that they're well supported and that we think about their stress levels and the respect and saying thank you for the job that they're doing as well. Um, And I think through this, uh, there will be a much more appreciation for the aged care workforce and the job that they do, uh, and as well as health professionals out there as well. Well, Craig, it's been, it's been great having a chat with you today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And uh, just remember that the Aged Care Advocacy Services are there for people and they can be contacted on 1800 700 600. Fantastic. Thanks again. Thanks. That's Craig Gear, CEO of OPAN, the Older Persons Advocacy Network. Thanks for watching. Keep up to date with information from trusted sources and stay safe. I'm Steve Iloff. See you next time on Altura Now.